Hello, my name is Joe Burns. Welcome to day, today's Daily Dose. Um, you know, the days that we live in, there's not a lot of things we can control. And uh, there's a lot of fear, a lot of confusion out there. But as we press into Jesus and get to know him better through his word by spending time with him, we really have nothing to fear, do we? So today, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 14 through 21. Many of the verses there, not all of them. It starts off, God's word starts off, For the love of Christ controls us, holds us together, restrains us, compels us, concluding this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose on their behalf. And we recall in Galatians 2.20 where Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ and it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live is for him, to serve him, for to me to live as Christ and to die as gain, Philippians 1. So, therefore, if any man is in Christ, positionally in Christ through the new birth, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. The old things have gone by, they're gone. Behold, new things have come. New things have come into being. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? Let's read in Romans 5, 8 through 11. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified or declared not guilty by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. And the wrath of sin, God's wrath upon sin. We're no longer dead in our sins. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That word reconciliation is a word that means to so act that the opposite party can be forgiven, may be drawn back. So God acted by giving us his son, and we respond to the Holy Spirit's conviction and turn to him in faith, and we're reconciled. We're made new. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Our lives are not our own. Our lives are his. We're part of the family of God. So... Verse 18, now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Wow, Lord. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. What does it mean to be an ambassador? Lord, I want to be the best ambassador there possibly can be, right? Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were calling with urgency and appealing with urgency through us, we urge you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. This is the ambassador's message. And in the Greek, it's do it now, do it now. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, on my behalf, on your behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We're ambassadors for Christ. So Paul also in Ephesians 6, after talking about putting on the full armor of God, verses 18 through 20, he talks, he says, I'm an ambassador in chains. Please pray for me. I mean, Paul, we are called to the same call that Paul is called with, to be ambassadors for Christ. And it's like, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I heard a, a fellow once say that too many of us are secret agents that have never blown our cover. It's like, Lord, I don't want to be a secret agent. I don't want to, I want to blow my cover, but I want to blow it in your strength, in your power, that people might be reconciled to you. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, talks about, 
Paul tells the Thessalonians, you became imitators of us and the Lord having received the word with much tribulation, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you all over. And it's like, Lord, I'm your ambassador and I am to be an imitator of Paul, of you, um, People are to be able to look at my life and see you and not see hypocrisy and sin. They need to see a man with your wisdom and your heart and your brokenness, uh, your concerns, um, who can handle your word, who spend much time with you. And I know you well because I, I spend a lot of time with you and I talk with you and I pour out my heart to you. I think of Psalm 27, 6, where David shows his determination. He says, one thing, one thing, and that I shall seek. He's determined to do one thing, not in his own strength, in the strength of God the Father and in strength of the Holy Spirit. We have the strength of Jesus Christ in us, but Jesus Christ expects us to want all that he has, to want to know him, to want to be effective ambassadors. He's going to make us that as we avail ourselves to him. But Paul says, one th or David, one thing and that I shall seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to meditate, and it's not chanting, it's asking questions, it's pondering God's word, Jesus' word, it's, it's seeing his delightfulness as we spend time with him in his word, as we talk to him firsthand, firsthand. It's like, Lord, I want to be a man who knows you firsthand from spending time with you. I want a 2 Timothy 2.15 be able to accurately handle your word. I want you to be able to entrust people into my life because you know I know you. You know I'm depending upon you. You know I love you. You know I hate the sin that used to drag me down. You know that I, I want to see people as you see them and be brokenhearted for them as you are. I want to see through all the lies of the world and see it with your wisdom and your insight and your mind. Lord, I want to be the most effective ambassador there can be. If, if I know you that well, Lord Jesus, I'll be able to represent you properly. I'll be able to share your heart properly. You say, Lord Jesus, that as I spend time with you, I'm going to be like a tree firmly planted by the rivers, by the water, in a time of trouble and drought. And even as I grow older, I'll bear much fruit for your glory. I'll be able to share your heart effectively. And Lord, in Psalm 90, verses 7 through 12, it talks about sometimes our lives sort of end, end with a, a whimper because we haven't fought the fight. We haven't finished the course. We haven't accomplished the work you've given us to do. And then it ends with Psalm 90, verse 12, that, Lord, that I might present to you a heart of wisdom. And Lord, that all of us here would, all of us here in journey, that we would be mighty ambassadors who know you well, who know your heart, who are brokenhearted for the lost, who can accurately handle your word so you can trust people into our lives and we can share your word effectively. We can, we can say, I've been there. The Lord showed me this firsthand. I know him. I trust him. I believe him. He will do it. He will bring us through everything there is, even these tough times ahead. And one thing we can control, we can control what we do with the rest of our lives. Lord, I can. I'm not going to go crazy because of all these things going on in the world around us. We're tumbling into the last days. Lord, please keep me in your service. Please give me people to share your heart with. Please, um, Give me opportunities to speak forth for you. Lord Jesus, as as the days go by, Lord, sanctify. I want to sanctify you in my heart. 1 Peter 3.15 Always being ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and in fear. Lord Jesus, that we would be people who spend time with you every day, one-on-one -on -one in your word, where we dig up your truths firsthand in your presence, and we are powerfully strengthened 
and sent out as the Holy Spirit convicts hearts that you bring them into our lives, that we would be mighty men in Christ's service, Lord, that I would be. And Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be alive in these days, and I thank you for my brothers and sisters here at Journey. And I just ask that we would all, shoulder to shoulder and back to back, fight this fight and finish the course and bring great joy to your heart. I just thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.